But I don't really talk about that because for the last 35 years, I've been practicing law. I have my own law office on Beacon Street in Boston. Uh, I've been a colonel in the Army. I retired as a full colonel after 30 years. I taught at the Command and General Staff College. I'm a graduate of the Command and General Staff College. Why is that important? It's important because the Office of the Attorney General is the biggest law office in New England. There are some 235 lawyers who work in the Attorney General's office. When you put in all the paralegals, all the staff, and those uh, investigators that are there, it's by far the biggest law office in all of New England. And the person who was Attorney General has to be a leader. And I will submit my background to show that I have done the things that are required to be done by leaders. And I expect as Attorney General, now hear me, those folks who work for me, they're not going to work 37 and a half hours a week. They're going to do what I do today. I work a minimum, a minimum every week of 44 hours, minimum. Most of the time it's 48 hours. No, I'm not going to require that they be sitting at their desk, but they're all going to have computers. And when you're trying cases and getting involved in these things, you don't work 37 and a half hours a week. You wouldn't expect your lawyer uh, to say, oh, you know, it's 5 o'clock, I've I got to stop, I'm going to go home. That isn't going to work. That's why we're going to get a lot of things done, right, in less time because folks are going to have to work harder. And if they don't, we're going to invite them to look elsewhere for a job. Now, along the way, I was MDC commissioner. Uh, Eddie King appointed me, Governor King appointed me MDC commissioner. And I remember coming out here to Medford, uh, getting uh, with certain people uh, uh, in your city council at, at the time, taking pictures with them and uh, doing work on all your parks and taking care of everything as the MDC commissioner. So another route that I have in Medford. Let's talk for a second about MACE. Women in Massachusetts, if you want to protect yourself in your walking, coming home at night, in the winter, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, you have no means of protecting yourself. So as the Attorney General, I'm going to change the regulation, which I can do and nobody can stop me, and I'm going to say from now on, women can buy mace, the canisters, and if you feel uncomfortable walking somewhere, you carry it with you in your pocket, and if somebody accosts you, Believe me, one squirt of mace is going to protect you from anything. That's a change. Now, why hasn't the present Attorney General done that? The last three Attorneys General have always, 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 you know, forgive me and don't misunderstand what I'm about to say. They have been fifth columnists for union bosses. I am not against unions. I'm against union abuses. I, as Attorney General, I'm very interested in producing an environment where people will work. There's nothing worse than a man or a woman who has children who wants to go to work and can't find a job. Using the code of Massachusetts regulations, I'm going to change that wherever I can. Now, I'm only going to run for two terms, folks, and that's it. I'm not going to run for any other office. You go back as far back as you want to go. Everybody who's been Attorney General has run for higher office. They have used the office of Attorney General as a stepping stone. And therefore, they're making political decisions as Attorney General because they're looking out for the next step. I'm not going to do that. Let me also talk about the construction industry for a moment. The biggest dollar value, right, dollar value in Massachusetts was the construction industry. Now it's third. If you think about it, all of the folks that are involved in the construction industry, from the guy that cuts down the tree, the guy that mills the furniture, the guy that transports it, very simple. Everybody that's involved, the air conditioning, all the sub pieces, the, the electricians, all the people that are involved in that. Right now, there's 20% unemployment in Massachusetts in the construction industry. We have to put people back to work. We're going to change the prevailing wage to put more people to work. The idea is people have to work. And if we have to change the law a little bit to give more people the opportunity to work, we're going to do it. Have you ever heard of the Inspector General in Massachusetts? Do you know that there's an Inspector General? Okay. I have said that I'm going to partner with the Inspector General, and we're going to root out corruption. His name is Greg Sullivan right now. He's a good guy. He's a Democrat, so we forgive him for that. 
But he's a good guy, but his staff, he's understaffed and underfunded. So I have told him, when I'm Attorney General, you and I are going to be partners. You can have all the credit. I don't care. But we're going to root out corruption because he is the exact guy that knows where it is. Now let me talk about something I call the Ness Group. You folks, you're going to, you're going to laugh in a minute when you understand Ness. Where, where, why Ness? Does anybody, where, where'd you hear the word Ness, the name Ness before? Okay. Okay. Through the use of computers, I'm going to have accountants in my office. We're going to cut back some lawyers and we'll have some accountants. And we're going to look at all these mortgage foreclosures. Because we're going to start with mortgage foreclosures. And we're going to look to see whether or not the people who applied for these mortgages told the truth. And by doing so, by taking a representative, representative sample, we're going to find that there's been a lot of corruption with regard to the application for mortgages, for which you and I are paying. We're going to come down hard on those people. I, I just got noticed today that the 10,000 membership of Veterans Helping Veterans have endorsed me. An email has gone out saying that this is the guy, Guy Carboni, they sent me a copy of it. So we're going to be fine. Uh, illegal immigration. By using state labor laws that I used to enforce when I was general counsel of the Department of Labor Industries, I can stop it dead in its tracks. I don't have to worry about the federal government. I'm going to re require through the Code of Massachusetts regulations that every employer for two successive quarters who reports to the Division of Unemployment Assistance that they have three or more employees. I'm going to require that they do three things. It's, man it's not mandatory now, but I'm going to require it. You all know what the uh, I-9 program is. If you're an employer, you know that people have to show you two means of, of, two means of identification to show you that they can work here legally. But unfortunately, there's a lot of forgery going on. There's also something called the Social Security Account Number Verification. You can use that. The federal government has that. Again, there's a lot of forgery and cheating going on. There's a new program that was established by the Department of Homeland Security called the E-Verification System, E-Verify, all right? Now, it's not mandatory. So employers, they can join if they want. They pay a small fee. And the law requires that if you want to hire somebody, you first have to hire them, and then within the next 72 hours, you can avail yourself of this program by going on the computer to see whether or not they're legally allowed to work in the states. Not in, I mean in, in the United States. Now, it's not mandatory, but as Attorney General, I'm going to make it mandatory in Massachusetts. Let me speak a little bit about landscaping, something that we know, my family knows something about. In the landscaping business, if you're playing by the rules, it costs a lot of money to keep your employees working. I'm talking about workers' comp, I'm talking about payroll deductions, I'm talking about health benefits. Assume that this fellow is doing it the right way. This fellow over here is cheating. He hires illegals, he doesn't have workers' comp. If somebody gets hurt, they end up in the uh, emergency room. You and I are paying for it, and they lie about how they got hurt. They're not withholding taxes. All the things that are going on, the overhead and everything else, is not being covered. So this fellow who's cheating has an advantage over this fellow who's doing it the right way. That's just a microcosm of what's going on. And I'm going to stop it. Let me say this, that when I'm Attorney General, nobody's going to be handing out condoms to kids down, in, uh, down the Cape. I'm going to stop that dead in its tracks. I believe that parents have got a right to raise their children as they see fit. But when misguided parents are injuring their children, then it's time for me to step in and do something. All these things I've talked about, the present attorney general could have done it. Okay, any questions? And I got to run. So, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Um, you, you mentioned that regarding um, mortgages, you want to go after to penalize people who lie in their applications, and that's true. Many people did. Um, but. The other thing was... You I saw there. you doing like this. Yeah. I, 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 you, okay. you know, this is a theme I hear all the time. And yeah. People just don't know because they don't know how the industry works. But um, mortgage brokers are... They work within the system. They work hard. And they work legally. Did I and say... It's so disingenuous. Okay. These are hardworking people who made a legal living 
helping people realize their dreams of home ownership by the law, by their truest beliefs. And it's just disingenuous, not right, and, and hurtful to a lot of families who make their livings that way and are being touted now as criminals. Okay, but do you feel strongly about that? 